This video is a quick walkthrough of standard deviation and standard error of the mean that we talked about in class. So first, standard deviation. So what standard deviation is, is how spread out your data is from your mean or your average. And the example I gave in class, which I actually got online, was that you have 100 people in a room, 50 of them are 80, and 50 of them are zero because they're newborns. That would mean if you took an average, you would get 40. The problem is the average age is really not 40 because there's nobody in the room that's even near 40 years old. And so what we really want with our data is this. We want our data to be kind of a nice bell curve. If we want to calculate an average, we're hoping that that means that our data actually represents this average. So standard deviation is a number it has kind of a complicated looking formula. The good news is that you are not required to know how to use the formula. You just have to know what it means. And this is what it means. Let's say that our average number here uh, in the center of our bell curve here was 60 inches. This represented the average of our a bunch of heights we measured and it was 60 inches tall. One standard deviation in each direction means that 68% of our data lies plus or minus that one standard deviation. In other words, if, if 60 inches tall is our average and the standard deviation they give you is 12 inches, then that means that 68% of our data lies between 60 inches plus 12, which is 72, and 60 inches minus 12, which is 48. So 68% of our sample would lie between 48 and 72. 96% of our data lies within two standard deviations, always. So we get this number that's our standard deviation, and if we know what that number is and we know what our average is, we can basically say that 68% of our data lies within plus or minus one standard deviation, and then 96% of our data lies within two standard deviations. So on the flip side, if we had a second experiment and the standard deviation this time was 12 inches, I'm sorry, 2 inches, then we would know that 68% of our data now lies between 58 and 62 inches tall. It would tell us that our average or our data is much closer to the average, that our data points are kind of clustered more closely around the average than if our standard deviation is a larger number. Now, this is the formula, and they give it to you on the formula sheet, but they tell you you're not going to have to use it. I'm going to give you a quick walkthrough of the formula just so you get an idea of how they calculate it. So this is how, how it works, basically. First you calculate the mean, the average, and then for every data point that you got, you subtract it from the mean and you square what you get. You add all of those up and divide it by the size of the population minus one. That's right here, the n minus one. And then you take the square root of the entire thing. Now to make this a little more, I guess, concrete, here is an actual example that I found online. So they gave you five dogs and they said that these were their heights, 600, 470, et cetera. This was their height. So the first thing you would do in this standard deviation formula is you'd calculate the mean. So you'd add them up, divide by five. The mean you get is 394. You then would subtract each one of these numbers from the mean, square it, and add them all up. And so here you go. So, so um, 394 minus 600. 206 squared, 394 minus 470, 394 minus 170, etc. You square them all. The third step now would be that you're going to divide them by the population size minus 1. There were five dogs in our sample, so we're going to subtract 1 and we're going to divide this by 4. And so that's the number we get. We divide it by 4, we get 27, 130, and we take a square root of the entire thing. And the number that we get is. 165. Now what does that tell us? That tells us that if we take our mean, which was 394, that 68% of our population is between 394 plus 165 and 394 minus 165. And then 96% of the population of the of the um, population would lie between um, 394 plus double this and 394 minus this. And this is what it would look like in a graph. They would probably show you something that looks like an I, and they would tell you, for example, here, that that's plus or minus one standard deviation. So they're basically telling you this was my average right here, 
and then my with including one standard deviation, 68% uh, of my data was between these two points. Now, if our standard deviation was a smaller number, then this little i would be smaller. And the smaller this is, it means more and more of our data fell close to that actual average. So you're not going to have to use the formula. You just have to understand what it means. OK, and this is the second formula on the, on the AP formula sheet that you also do not actually have to use. And it's called standard error of the mean. And the standard error of the mean is actually related to standard deviation. Because if you look at it, it is the standard deviation divided by the square root of the population size. So basically, the bigger your population, you're going to get a smaller standard error of the mean. It also means that the smaller your standard deviation, the smaller your standard error of the mean. And so if you look here, what does it mean? It's how accurately your data represents a random sample. In other words, if I went into a population and I picked five individuals, and I took an average, and I got my standard deviation, I could still wonder, did I really get a random sample? What if I was sampling from a lake and I got five fish? How would I know that the five I supposedly randomly got were really a random representation of the population? If I got them all by the edge of the water, maybe that's not really a random sample because maybe larger fish or smaller fish hang out near the edge. So that is what this number tells us. So if you imagine that bell curve again, if, if you take your average plus or minus one standard error of the mean, it means that you have 68% confidence that between those two numbers would be the real average of your population. And so the smaller this is, it would mean that you're closer and closer to what the real average is. And the bigger this is, it means, for one thing, your data is very spread out, sort of like how the standard deviation told you, um, and also that your real average may be within a much bigger area. OK, so this is your formula. Again, we're not going to actually use it. But one important thing is, if you get the standard error the mean of two separate groups, and those two standard error of the means don't overlap with each other, it tends to mean that there was a st statistical difference between the two groups. In other words, you take a sample um, and you take another sample and you calculate the standard error of the mean. If the standard error of the mean, if those two i's overlap with each other, that might indicate that in reality the average might be the same for both populations because the standard error of the means, they, real they overlap. So Here's uh, actually two questions that were on last year's AP exam. So the first one over here on the left, they gave this experiment and they explained that this was a population of guppies and the guppies, the male guppies have spots. And they first took a random sample of the guppies and this represented, 10 represented the average number of the spots on the guppies. And they included, and I don't have it here, but it basically said that the line here was a representation of one standard error of the mean. So that's what this I represented, one standard error of the mean. So that means that our original population, in reality, the average was somewhere between 8 and 12. Um, and it also tells us that our standard deviation was probably a fairly big number, too. Now they let this population go for, I believe it was five generations, and then they took another average of what was there. And if you look at that second average, you now see what's happened is the average number of spots has increased. Uh, not only has it increased, but the standard error of the mean has actually decreased. And that tells us that there's less variation here and that the population, really, the average is around 12 spots, give or take. And then they added a predator. And you can see what happened here with the predator. When the predator was present, the average number of spots went down. Without the predator, the average number of spots actually showed a little more variation as time went on, but it still stayed as a, a higher number. So the question was actually an evolution question about natural selection, that kind of thing. Um, but they did ask you to explain the graph and to include in it an explanation of what the standard error of the mean told you. And that's what it told you, that in our original population there was a lot of variation, the data points were fairly spread out, our real average fell between a pretty big gap. But as time went on, what we saw is that our population, um, that average, um, was more represented. Uh, there was a lot less variation in the population. This chart on the right is actually a second question, and they actually had you graphing this one.
So they told you about these things called trichomes, and they are found on plants, and they counted how many there were. And they had three populations of plants, and what they asked you to do was take an average of all these numbers. Actually, they did it for you. I take that back. So there were six plants. The average was nine. This one, there were uh, 11 plants. 11, the average was 11. Um, and then this one, the average was 14. So six plants from each population, these were the averages. Now looking at this, it would look like population one had the lowest average, then two, then three. However, they also tell you here that the standard error of the mean for each population is one. Now, when you actually graph this, it said, notice, create an appropriately labeled graph to illustrate the sample means of the three populations with 95% confidence, and they told you what they meant was within two standard errors of the mean. So they wanted you to graph that average of nine, but then they wanted you to make that little I showing that the actual range was between seven and 11. And then for our second one, that range would have been uh, between nine and 12, or nine and 13. And then for our third one, the average would have been between 12 and 16. Now, I, it's hard to visualize, and I didn't draw this out, but notice the second question. Based on the sample and the standard error of the means, identify the two populations that are most likely to have a statistically significant differences in their mean densities. And then it asks you to justify it. Well, again, if we actually had graphed this, you'd see that the standard error of the mean for population one which was between, with two standard errors of the mean, was between 7 and 11. And then population 3 would have been between 12 and 16. Those two standard errors of the mean would not have overlapped each other. You would have seen those little eyes, and they would have been separated. Population 1 and 2, the standard errors of the mean overlap, because this can be anywhere between, uh, remember, up to 11, and this one can be anywhere between 9 and 13. So the answer they were looking for was that because the standard errors of the mean don't overlap in population one and population three, that those two would be the more likely ones that would actually have an average that was different, statistically different from each other. So I went through this quickly and I hope that it made sense. If you still have questions, come see me in class. Remember, you're not actually going to have to um, use either of those formulas. The chi-square test, you do have to know how to use, and I have another video on that. But as far as standard error of the mean, you are not actually required to use it.